to see today's photo, go to mtforchrist.org or follow me, M.T. Clark, on Facebook or Twitter. Good morning. Today's photo of Monet's Water Lilies, 1906, projected on a wall while a pair of art enthusiasts crane their necks to see more dazzling displays of art put into motion while they rest in lounge chairs, comes to us from yours truly, as I captured the scene during my visit to the Monet Experience in downtown Schenectady on November 18th. Well, it's Saturday, and if your day isn't already planned out with holiday decorating, shopping, or some other activities, I can certainly recommend the Monet Experience as a decent way to spend a couple of hours. That recommendation is for those of my friends who like art, of course. People have different tastes, and even though I enjoyed it, there's no guarantee that you will have a similar experience. That goes for life of faith as well. If I could give you my experiences of faith from the things I have gone through, learned, encountered, and experienced throughout my life, especially since the days of my since the days of my salvation in 2010 and my decision to go into recovery in 2015. You might be getting up early and writing a blog and producing a podcast to encourage anyone who will listen to keep on walking and talking with God yourself, or you might not. I often reflect on my relationship with God and where there where it has led me throughout through my life, and in my honest assessment, even though I have felt compelled to make the decisions I have made as if there were no other choice, Uh, The truth is, there were other choices. I could have chosen not to follow the Lord the way I have. I could have decided to not pursue the ministry or education opportunities that I had. I could have chosen to be content, uh, just being a sinner saved by grace and refused to be obedient to God's word that commands sobriety, sexual purity, and to not be gluttonous. But I'm glad I did. Because I decided to follow the Lord, my life has been transformed in a good way. Uh, But I do have to be honest and tell you that the transformation did not uh, come overnight, and I am still very much a work in progress. So forgive me if I offend, overwhelm, or annoy you. Uh, You could make the case that the Lord has been working on me all my life, but it wasn't until 2010 when I put my faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior that I stopped rebelling and became a real Christian although I was also a real mess. I had a, lot of, uh, I had a lot to learn about the Bible and following Jesus, but even though I was a mess, the Lord put it in my heart to surrender to his will, to empty myself of all my wrong ideas, bad habits, selfish ways, and sin, and to follow him. Uh, if asked, one of the earliest things I would have told you to do after I, I became born again, other than immediately saying the sinner's prayer to make Jesus your Lord, the Lord of your life, that's step one, was to seek the Lord, that's step two, and it really doesn't stop. Lately, I have been increasingly convicted to follow John Baptist's words in John, 30, uh, John 3, uh, verse 30, where in speaking about Jesus, he said, he must increase, but I must decrease. I've been convicted that I, have, uh, that I may have thought too highly of myself and need to practice humility. I've been resting over the last several days, overcoming cold sy- symptoms, all better now, I think, and enjoying the peace at my countryside home with my wife, Tammy Lynn. And I can't help but think that this short illness and staycation was brought to me by the Lord to humble me and to force me to rest. Um, I appreciate it, (laughs) and I will try to cool my jets and humble my heart in an attempt to practice humility going forward. I haven't accomplished anything that wasn't given to me by the Lord, and I am glad uh, that I have been directed to this place um, to avoid being prideful. Uh, So this morning, I'm sharing another mindful of Christ's encouragement from this week's Word for Wednesday from Lauren Ross Kelly uh, on what was one of the most simple and profound instructions from Jesus that inspired my walk of faith and still inspires it today. And uh, this is all from Lauren Ross Kelly of um, mindfulofchrist.net from her Word for Wednesday. And it's... uh, she references Matthew 6.33 from the NIV, 
which says, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all this these things will be given to you as well. And Lauren, Lauren writes, Seek God first. Jesus himself is telling this, the disciples and you and, and I uh, that we are to look for God's kingdom and, and righteousness. Look for his way of doing and being right in attitude, character, and behavior. Seeking him is to look to him, and we are to do so before we do anything else. In our day, before we do anything. In our decisions, before we decide anything. In our weaknesses or strengths, before we complain or use them. In all things, he needs to be our priority. He needs to be our focus. This needs to be our main focus in life. To aim for this, perhaps you need to be intentional about it. In this chapter, Jesus is teaching on money and possessions. He is saying that when you do this, your other needs will be met. He will provide and give you everything you need. The next verse goes on to say, so don't worry about tomorrow. When you put God's kingdom first, you'll find you'll stop. Uh, you'll stop, and uh, you won't wor- uh, You'll stop worrying. Uh, and then she finally finally uh, completes her post by saying, "How can?" you be intentional about seeking God before anything else. That's all from Lauren Ross Kelly at uh, mindfulofchrist.net. Thank you, Lauren, once again. I couldn't agree more with her message and encourage all who hear or see this message to seek the Lord and to be intentional about looking to do things Jesus' way in attitude, character, and behavior, and to make following him your priority and focus for life. Today's Bible verse comes to us from the Quick Scripture Reference for Counseling by John G. Cruis. This morning's meditation verse comes from the section on the church, communion of the saints. Uh, And today um, they they reference um, Psalm 84, uh, 1 and 2, and Psalm 10, uh, 84, uh, verse 10. Uh, But they give you the whole psalm, so we're going to read through that. Um, So here we go. Um, Psalm 84, 1 through 12 from the ESV, English Standard Version, the word of the Lord says, How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My song, my soul longs, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrows find a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, ever singing your praise, Selah. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, and whose heart are the highways to Zion. And they go through the valley of Baca. They make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. O Lord, God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob, Selah. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Today's verses fall under the tenth point of our counseling reference resource section on the church in communion of saints. The psalmist longed to be in the house of the Lord. Is uh, The house of God is that is that tenth point. Uh, today's verse reflects the deep love and peace that one can have know when they are living in harmony with the Lord and practicing their faith through regular visits to his courts, singing his praises. Knowing that you are a part of God's kingdom and fully engaging in your faith should be a joyous experience. I'm never going to die. God loves me. I have been forgiven. God cares for me. I have been accepted. I am safe. I am loved. I am special. I am God's adopted child. He chose me. 
these should be a part of your joyous reflections as a Christian, and they should drive you to long to be in the house of God, where they can fuel your praise. As always, I invite all to go to mtforchrist.org, where I always share insights from prominent Christian theologians and counselors to assist my brothers and sisters in Christ with their walk. Today we are sharing from God, from God is in the Manger, Reflections on Advent and Christmas by Diedrich Bonhoeffer. Um, and um, today we're, we're walking through day three. It's not officially Advent in 2023, but this devotional was uh, gave you more weeks than... Uh, and what the current season is going to give us. And because of my schedule of doing it six days a week, um, we've decided to you know, start it early so we can get all 28, the 28 entries uh, before the, uh, the Christmas holiday arrives. So you have to forgive me. Um, but today we're reading from God is in the Manger by Dietrich Bonhoeffer. And today it's Advent Week 1, Waiting, Day 3. And Bonhoeffer writes, Not everyone can wait. Not everyone can wait. Neither the, state, the sated nor the satisfied nor those without respect can wait. The only ones who can wait are people who care, carry restlessness around with them and, pay, and people who look up with reverence to the greatest in the world. Thus, Advent can be celebrated only by those whose souls give them no peace, who know that they are poor and incomplete, and who sense something of the greatness that is supposed to come, before which they can only bow in humble timidity, waiting until he inclines himself toward us, the Holy One himself. God in the child in the manger, God is coming, the Lord Jesus is coming, Christmas is coming. Rejoice, O Christendom. And then the following is a letter to, uh, from Bonhoeffer to his fiancée, Maria von Wedemeyer, on December 1st, 1943. And Bonhoeffer writes, I think we're going to have an exceptionally good Christmas. The very fact that every outward circumstance precludes our making provision for it will show whether we can be content with what is truly essential. I used to be very fond of thinking up and buying presents, but now that we have nothing to give, the gift God gave us in the birth of Christ will seem all the more glorious. The emptier our hands, the better we understand what Luther meant by his dying words. We're beggars, it's true. The poorer our quarters, the more clearly we perceive that our hearts should be Christ's home on earth. That's the end of that letter. And then finally, the uh, devotional gives us Luke 6, 20 through 26. And the word of God says, Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you, who, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. And that is the end of the, uh, the, the sharing from Don ha uh, Bonhoeffer's devotional, uh, God, in the, God is in the Manger, uh, for day three. Um, and uh, that's, the, that's it for our message. Um, as always, we encourage a lifestyle of Christian discipleship. Uh, we encourage people to follow the Lord, seek the Lord, and to, uh, you know, to, to do what the word, word of the Lord says. Um, so we encourage that. Uh, we've discovered it to be a, a whole transformational uh, process uh, that happens when you decide to seek the Lord, when you do what's right and you live in harmony of God and, and you know, seek his presence and his wisdom and strength. You find it, and uh, you find his love, too. And um, so we, we encourage that. 
If you don't know what your freedom in Christ is or what that is or who you are in Christ, we recommend our um, discipleship series of classes that we've done um, in the past and we share on our podcast, our YouTube channel. They're called Victory Over the Darkness, The Bondage Breaker, and Freedom in Christ. They're all available. Um, um, uh, basically, um, uh, and well, they're all available to you, but they're also from Dr. Neil Anderson and uh, the Word of God. We also have done a study on Bonhoeffer's discipleship. If anyone's interested in that, they can check it out. Um, Because all we try to do is point people to good resources, uh, like Mindful of Christ and and (laughs) Freedom in Christ Ministries and Dietrich Bonhoeffer, uh, to encourage you in your faith, um, that you're not alone, and um, that it's a good thing to be walking and talking with God. So, uh, I'm not sure what I'll be doing today. Uh, I think it's wide open. It could be decorating for the holidays. It could be any number of things. I'm not sure. I more or less surrender to my wife's will. Um, We mutually agree, of course. Um, But um, I'm just happy to be in her presence and willing to do whatever needs to be done uh, or whatever we decide to do. Um, Sometimes it's taking a hike. Sometimes it's um, doing things around the house, and sometimes it's uh, going to art exhibits, so who knows? Um, Sometimes it's just running errands, but uh, I find peace in her presence because I love her, and she loves me, and we have God at the center of our relationship. We uh, study the Bible together and uh, encourage each other in our faith. Um, That's the way our our relationship is supposed to be, with God as our priority and our focus. So... um, So let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for another day in your kingdom. We thank you so much for all that you've done for us. We thank you for the blessings of this life. Um, Lord, we thank you for anyone who's listening or reading this message. We pray for you to come alongside them in their prayer request and their walk of faith. And Lord, wherever the day takes us, we pray for you to go before us, open our eyes to the things you want us to see, and move our steps in the things you'd have us do. That's all we want to do is represent you in your kingdom, Lord, and invite other people to know you. Uh, experience um, the freedom that comes from making Jesus their Lord and Savior and um, walking into your will for their lives. Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we love you, and we pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.